refreshing and quite possibly reinventing those habits of highly successful people in a modern day world, a post COVID world. Hi everyone, welcome back to Sugar Mama TV. A very quick reminder to make sure you are subscribed to this YouTube channel and that notification bell is switched on because that way you will know the moment I have published a fresh new YouTube video. And of course, don't forget to make sure you are following me on my Instagram account at Sugar Mama TV and of course at my normal personal account at Canna Sass, kind of like Canna's ass. Anyway, today I want to talk about the habits of highly successful people, but as I said, refresh them and maybe reinvent them. The other day I was reading one of those typical blog posts about habits of highly successful people. And whilst the blog post had lots of really valuable and helpful advice, I felt like the blog posts of these subject matters are a little bit out of touch now. We're living with a different type of stress. We're having to adapt in a different type of way and at a different speed. And it's just a very different world. So I wanted to revisit these ideas and refresh them and give you my own, I guess, spin or take on what are the habits of highly successful people, but not just talk about them, also talk about how we can obtain them, how we can strengthen these habits. And I guess how we can move through life, not just aggressively to try and achieve everything and be the best at everything, but come from a place of more kindness, more love, and I guess more balance. I guess this is my new take on what are the habits of highly successful people in a modern day world. All right, number one is the cliche typical, be organized. But I want to look at this and talk about this in more detail. What does it really mean to be organized? I'm probably gonna annoy a few people, but I'm gonna say it's not about having every single storage or organization gadget and gizmo. To me, being organized is actually about having less stuff because when you have less stuff, you don't actually need all those organization boxes and cabinet you know, dividers and storage containers and clothes hangers. Like you, if you have less stuff, it's so easy to be organized. You have, you know, you can tidy and clean your space so much more efficiently. It's actually a lot easier to remain organized when you have less stuff. You also find things in a very quick and efficient way. And in fact, you're less likely to lose things when you have less stuff. So my recommendation, if you want to be more organized in your life, and that is to go through all the components in your life, your home, your office, your car, your social life, your social circles, the people that you connect with, how you choose to spend your time and look to reorganize, retidy and declutter and get rid of anything that is draining your time and your energy. I promise you, you will feel instantly reorganized and this will cost you nothing. And you don't need to buy anything either. My second idea or philosophy for highly successful people in a modern day world is about talking about strategies, solutions, and ideas. I absolutely love the saying, small minds talk about people. Average minds talk about events. Great minds talk about ideas and strategies. I think this is really important in a modern day world where we can quite often get caught up in the negativity, the problems, the dramas, the crises. I think it's really important if we can stop and take the time to consciously catch ourselves when we get stuck in this place and focus on what we can do to get out of the problem. What can we do to get through to the other side? What can we do to start healing and getting better and being proactive so that these problems never happen in the first place? I know this is easier said than done, but even just making a conscious note to yourself when you catch yourself doing it, stop right there. Try and shift or push yourself to see the blessing in disguise. Even just writing down on a piece of paper three positive things that are going on right now, or even just simply putting your hand up and saying, hey, do you have any ideas to help me get through this? Or can you talk to me about how you got through this or what strategies or habits or solutions or actions that helped you in other ways or you know that it helped other people? Start to really make a conscious effort to focus on positive solutions. The third concept I want to talk about is the early riser. On every single blog post I've ever seen of highly successful people, they always say these people get up really early, like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. And whilst I actually wholeheartedly 
agree with this. I also want to look a bit at a modern day world, as I said, in a post-COVID world. I think that the real point here is that highly successful people use their time really efficiently. They know how to get into the zone, into that bubble where they power through getting a lot of work done in a really efficient way in a really short period of time. And for me, myself personally, I find that getting up early at 5 a.m., getting some work done, clearing my emails, planning out my day, um, you know, doing some sort of productive, creative work is incredibly powerful. And in that space of, you know, an hour, I get the equivalent of, say, three hours worth of work done. However, not everyone is a morning person. You don't have to put guilt and pressure on yourself to get up at 5 a.m. if it doesn't work for your value system or your life. If you might quite possibly be a night owl, and if that's the case, work with it. That's perfectly fine. Just make sure that you, throughout your day, use your time efficiently. You teach yourself how to get into that bubble, that zone where you power through a lot of work, you're not getting distracted, you feel really engaged and connected with the work that you're doing, and you can feel a huge amount of progress and high quality progress as you get through that work. The fourth habit of highly successful people, I think, has to be thirst. Highly successful people want to know more. They're not just happy with certain statements or opinions or comments. They stop and question things. They want to find out more. They want to go deeper. They want to go and explore and investigate more. And I think this is a really important, valuable habit to have. If something you find in your life really intrigues you, whether it be something in your work, whether it be a new hobby, whether it be a new um, creative interest in your life, stop and take the time to really explore and learn more about it. If it's something that's going on in the news and something that really you know, triggers something within you or something that really excites you, inspires you, stop and take the time to actually learn more about what it is, what's going on, what, what else can you gain from that and what things can you learn from that that you can apply in your own life. The fifth habit of highly effective people in a modern day world is an abundant attitude. Looking at the glass half full, looking at opportunities, looking for the blessings in disguise. Again, a little bit about my second habit for highly effective people, but really trying to stop and take the time to catch yourself when you're being negative, when you're you know, drowning in pity or being a victim or self-wallow. By no means am I saying you can't have this, but you have to draw a line in the sand and only allow this to happen for a certain period of time. It's really important that we have a positive mindset. I have clients who are incredibly successful, but yet they have been really deeply impacted by COVID and their businesses have pretty much been shut down completely. But when I speak to these clients, and I check in with them, they still have this incredibly positive, strong, resilient attitude, and it is absolutely inspiring. And they know that they will get through it. It's just a matter of sitting tight, doing the best they can do to keep their head above water and continuously look for the blessings in disguise and adapt and evolve and understand how their businesses need to change in a positive way. Hack number six is one of my own personal suggestions and I'm actually really proud about chiming this in right now. But I really think that highly successful and effective people in a modern day world know exactly when they need to be frugal, but they also know exactly when they can splurge and invest and do something really nice to themselves with their hard earned money. Stopping and taking the time to understand where your value system lies, what do you enjoy spending money on and what do you not really value and then making sure you have the actions or the habit system in alignment to that. So for example, if I look at one of my most successful, most positive, most like inspiring clients of all time, he is someone that absolutely loves sports cars, sports cars that really do fly and cost a lot of money. And that is where he is really happy to spend his money. He doesn't question it because for him, that gives him a lot of pleasure and a lot of joy. But he also knows where he does not like to waste money and he lives a life aligned to that. So I highly recommend investing some time really exploring your value system questioning what do you really value and what do you actually see as a waste and starting to apply that in your life. And of course, every time you do save money, make sure you shift it towards a thousand dollar project account and put it towards one of your own financial goals. Habit number eight of highly efficient and effective people. And again, this actually wasn't on the list, 
but I'm going to put it in there because this is my video. And that is knowing when to connect and knowing when to disconnect. I think it's really important in a world where we are constantly connected to our phones with notifications and news in our ears and screens everywhere is knowing when we need to listen and learn and, and be informed, but also knowing when we need to switch off and disconnect. And when we do switch off and disconnect, we do it properly. We really do be present in our time and we use that disconnecting time efficiently. One thing that I struggle with personally is mother's guilt. I'm always feeling guilty. You see, when I'm at work, I'm feeling guilty about not being with Apple and Rocco and playing with them. Then when I'm at home playing with Apple and Rocco, I'm feeling guilty about not being at work. It's this bottomless pit, which is such an inefficient waste of time and energy. But when I remind myself, it's not about quantity, it's about quality. Again, coming back to my own, I guess, new principles and ideas and philosophies about being efficient and successful in a modern day world. So make your time of disconnection work. Make sure you properly switch off all your gadgets and gizmos and phones and notifications and use that time to get, for example, a really good quality nap or a really good quality night's sleep. Or when you're playing with your children, you are really present with your children. You're really engaging with them. You're looking at them in the eye. You're smiling. You're laughing. You're tickling them. You're reading stories to them. You're talking to them. You're sharing with them. You're playing. You're doing creative play with them. All those things are really important because when I say to my girlfriends, when they call me up about feeling guilty and yes, I need to take my own advice, I remind them it's quality, not quantity. When you're with your kids, make that time really count. And if you don't have children, the same principle applies when you're with your family, when you're with your partner, when you're with your friends. Use that time to connect on a deep, profound level so that you're filling their cup and you're also filling your own. And that really does help make the guilt subside. Habit number nine of highly successful people, and I do know that I've been adding in the word efficient and effective. Sorry about that. I just get carried away. But I think it's also about now looking at success from a holistic perspective. Success is not about numbers. It's not about how much money you've got in savings, how much money you've got in investments, how many people follow you on Instagram, how many likes do you get, how many subscribers have you got. Success is really about the big picture. It's about balance. It's about how you juggle that balance as well. I believe success is physical health, intellectual health, relationship health, spiritual health, and financial health. Learning to juggle those five things in harmony. And of course, in a modern day world, we need to be kind to ourselves. We're never gonna have all five things going perfectly. But when we pay attention and invest time into all five principles, balancing these and feeling better about ourselves and feeling more successful about ourselves does make a huge difference. To me, success is overall balance and happiness. So let's scrap success being about numbers and quantifying it. It's about quality and happiness and balance. And then the final 10th habit of highly successful, efficient and effective people. I'm going to put it in there because I'm just doing it anyway. And that is having goals. I don't think I actually saw this, to be honest, in all those blog posts about highly efficient people. I thought it was missing. I think it's really important that we all have some goals in our lives. Now, sometimes this can be a little bit overwhelming, and that is when we learn to just focus on one goal at a time or even just have little short-term goals in our lives. But I think it's really important to have something that you're working towards. So often when I'm making my podcast, I'm talking to people about their previous like financial mistakes or where they've you know drifted through life. Nine times out of 10, actually 10 times out of 10, the reason why they've drifted and not necessarily achieved anything or felt really flat and lethargic in their life is because they had no goals in our life. When we have a goal, we have a purpose, we have clarity, we get out of bed with so much more energy and determination and focus. And that feeling of progress as we work towards that goal, not necessarily having to achieve that goal, but making progress towards that goal actually makes us feel so re-energized, so powerful and so efficient and effective. It really does add so much success and value into our lives. And it's not necessarily about achieving that goal, but as I said, it's the actual progress. It really does fuel us to keep going and it awakens something within us that makes us realize how powerful and how capable 
and how efficient and effective we really can be. So what I recommend, if you want to apply this habit to be more successful in your life, simply think about some goals that you would like to achieve. Goals that make you feel excited, goals that make you feel like you could potentially do this and you would feel really good if you could achieve this or even make some progress in achieving this and creating a shift in your life. Just write down a couple of goals. They could be a financial one. They could be a physical one around your health and well-being. They might even be a spiritual one. It is okay. Just make sure you have at least one or two simple goals in your life. Write them down, give them a deadline and make sure every day you do one simple thing that goes towards the positive achievement of that goal. They're really simple habits that really do make a huge difference in our lives. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. Have a fantastic week and I will see you next week. Ciao for now.